Ned, wow. um, looking at this from the Giants perspective, you're seeing the Dodgers just completely spend. You're seeing the Padres, they're gonna they're gonna spend. Um, the D-backs are probably gonna spend. You're you're probably looking at another fourth place finish. Um, what do you kind of definitely do, do you go for it in free agency and, and try to just sign as much as you can to try to compete with these teams? Or do you kind of self-reflect and try to build your team through the farm system and try to replenish everything you can? It, that might take a couple years. Might It might be a little slower, but do you, I mean, what's, what's the route you take? Well, I think long-term, you're going to have to draft international sign and develop. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Dodgers, while they have spent a lot of money on free agency, they've also developed some players. So I think that long term, that is that is the way to do it. I think I think there's two things they need to do. One is that, without a doubt. And the other one is is start to make it a destination spot again mm-hmm. where people want to go there. They want to play there. Um you know, I, I don't know if it's a destination spot right now. I think it's where, where players go when they can't find another place to go. Uh, Blake Snell being an example from a year ago. Um, you know, that, that Chapman sign long-term is a great sign. That's a great start. You know, value of the contract, you know, we can we can debate that, I guess. But that they found somebody that they could they could kind of tie themselves to is really what they need to do. If you go back in the history of the franchise, you know, the signing of Barry Bonds changed everything in San Francisco. It was before I got there by a few years, but you know, that happened in in the winter of 92, 93. And it changed the entire dynamic of that franchise and helped lead to the new stadium, which is no longer a new stadium, but still maybe the best in baseball. Um, so you, it has to become a destination again. But in the meantime, you've got to really draft well. You've got to develop. You've got to be honest with your evaluations of who your prospects really are. Just because they may get to the big leagues don't mean that they're going to be in a, in a parade. Mm-hmm. Okay? you got to get players that you know can be in a parade. Buster knows this. He's, he's, he's done it. He's seen it. And it'll be you know his, his responsibility for, first and foremost – to really go and get players that that fit that criteria, but you gotta you gotta develop them and draft them and know who you're drafting and developing, and you've also got to be able to make your your city a, a destination spot. And you know, I mean, you know, I don't live there, so I can't really chime in on it. If, if either you guys live there, you can chime in on it. But you know, you see the free agent signings, and you know, you 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 don't necessarily know it is a destination spot. Yeah, I mean, we're constantly seeing. I mean, the past couple of years with with Farhan in charge, it was it was the it wasn't the destination. It was kind of the the fallback. The, the fallback, exactly, with those opt outs, and that that gives the the player complete control. So that those are two things you have to do: just to sign free agents, to sign them. You know, I mean, maybe there's some some value to doing that. That's a short term fix. If you're going to sign middle, you know, middle 20s, a little bit older, 27, 28, 29 free agents that you're going to have for a while, then you got to go for it. Mm-hmm. I'll give you one other way to look at it. So if, if you're a team, we don't have to say it's the Dodgers. If you're, I mean, the Giants, if, if you're a team that, and you just mentioned San Diego, Arizona, and LA, that these three teams, they're good teams. They're going to keep going. They're not. They're not falling off the cliff anytime soon with age, right? Yeah. So, you've got that. What is if you spent a hundred million dollars on a free agent? How close? How much closer does that get you? Mm-hmm. Does it get you eighty-five wins, but you still finish fourth? You know, I mean, so. The worst place to be is in the middle, whether it's the draft or whether it's in the standings or wherever it is. So I think you have to be, while people love the the shiny new player, so to speak, and somebody that, oh, we just signed so-and-so, this is great, you know, but you've got to really be able to map your club out and know that, but when we draft and develop well, or we know our system so well that we're a couple years away from having a really good pitching staff realistically a really good pitching staff 
Okay, mm -hmm. then you start to do it. But if you're four, five, six years away from really being competitive in your market, in your free, in your uh, signings and development system right now, you know what does a big free agent do for you? Might sell you a few seats, might get people excited a little bit, but people are paying attention. They know Arizona went to the World Series a year ago, and they're not an old team. They know the Dodgers mm -hmm. just won it and just signed Blake Snell, and have got you know Shohei coming back to pitch. And there's more guys out there for them. And, you know, San Diego was probably the one team that could have beat the Dodgers, right? Mm -hmm. They're the yep. one team. They had them down two games to one. I thought game I four of that series was the most pivotal game of the season for the Dodgers. They had a bullpen game against, against Dylan Cease. They shut them out. Mm -hmm. From then on, it was over. So how bad is San Diego? They're not bad. So realistically – what is a free agent going to do for you or two, unless they're going to be there when, when you start to get. Yeah. To you know, Ned, before the show started, do you have that thumbnail uh, Bora from or the original thumbnail you can pop up? I can uh, give me a second. I'll try to pop it hepatitis up. Hepatitis C. Okay. There's two L's and two T's in that name, but then yeah, he doesn't hepatitis C. He's a, he's a knowledgeable Dodgers fan. He said, uh, also, Coletti, again, misspelled. The man that started the Dodgers juggernaut. Yeah, we well, were just thank talking you, about this. I hope you're feeling better. Just before. <laughs> Hepatitis. Hey, Ned, I just have a question. Are you amazed in five years? First of all, are you glad you're out of the business? Because five years ago, when the Harper and Machado deal happened, people freaked out. 300 million. Are you surprised in a quick five years? Now we're talking. 700 800 million that's my question and second of all great job with the sharks they're competitive they're fun to watch and i know it was a rough start of the year but it's a whole season yeah it uh, mike greer the gm uh, has done a phenomenal job really um has taken us from really a, a place of of having no really great young players coming and also being up against the salary cap where now, I mean, you saw last night's game, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, between Eklund and, and, and Smith and, and Celebrini, and, there, and there's still more coming, and we have cap space. So, you know, it's, yeah. that's not easy to do. It's, it's the biggest difference I've noticed having worked in both sports, and I've been in hockey now for you know, maybe six, seven years. Um, the money? Yeah, you know what? I can remember when people – I can remember when, um, when Kevin Brown signed with the Dodgers. And it was for it may have been the first hundred million dollar deal or, or about, right? And people were like blown away. I mean, I can remember Saves and I were flying to the winter meetings and we had a layover someplace, and that's when the news broke. And we looked at each other like, oh my gosh, how, how does anybody compete with this? That's a hundred million, right? And then A Rod signed for 252, I think, years after that. You know, years ago, um, I, I think I did. I think there were three different times I may have done the largest contract in baseball at the time. Um, the first one was Ryan Sandberg. Okay. So we paid Ryan Sandberg 28 million for four years, 7 million a year. And people went crazy. How could you do this? You know, first of all, he was a hall of fame player and you, know, you start there still youthful at that point in time. And, you know, we had, um, quote, underpaid him in his earlier years. And so, you know, we did 28 for four, seven million a year. And it was like, how are we going to do? How are we going to afford this? And now, you know, you, you might be a little bit more than an extra man making seven million a year. So yeah. that's just how it escalates. Wow. If he wasn't there, they wouldn't be doing it. But yep. I the think money's there. And they TV get, streaming, they, you know, they get they, 200 million through revenue sharing each team. So yeah. <clears throat> I don't know why some teams don't spend. Robert, one of our members said, Ned, what are your thoughts on development of Will Smith and Macklin Celebrini? Oh, I think they're going to be great players. I think, you know, it, it takes a while to get your feet wet, so to speak. It doesn't just happen overnight. Just because you're, you're heralded as an amateur doesn't mean you're going to come in and set the league on fire. That rarely ever happens. But I think you're, we're starting to see Will get a little bit more comfortable. 
tremendous player, tremendous young person. And, and Macklin too. I mean, you watch him. I tell you what, watching last night's game, and I had a I had another game in Anaheim that I was scouting, so I was kind of watching watching us, you know, between periods and 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 that way. And seeing, you know, he he's he's been scoring well when he came back from the injury, but seeing the look on his face when he scored, like the excitement, the joy, the like it, I mean, this, they are going to be great young players, and Eklund is, is right with them, and we've got other players that our, our, our drafting people have done a great job with that are going to be coming up here too. So, well, this is uh, a wow, great but it's, it's going to be it's going to be a star-studded team of young players in time. This and is Dan, what's awesome. Dan, we beat the Kings seven to two. In case you didn't about, watch the game last. Oh, I know, I know. I saw that. I saw. So, but this is what's great. Last today, there's a. Uh, Twitter poll that went out and it was which Bay Area team wins the next championship? Warriors, 49ers, Giants, or Sharks? I picked the Sharks because they have had the foresight to rebuild where the Niners are getting old, the Giants are whatever, and the uh, Warriors have a shot if they make a couple deals this year so they have that outside shot. They could get there. But I think the Sharks... This is the way you have to do it. We've seen it in baseball, Ned. We've seen the oh, yeah. we saw the Houston Astros do it years ago and they've been competitive ever since they won, you know, they lost 100 games two or three years in a row and then they got all those guys Altuve and Correa and Springer and Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore. Yep, you know, Baltimore. I mean, you know, as we talk about the Giants, I mean, is that is that a way to go? I don't. I don't know. I don't know if the market holds that. Well, what's but, what's that's our that was the originally our topic tonight before the Blake's. We we literally went live and the Blake Snell news broke two minutes after we went live. And we do you want to see the thumbnail? Should I show the thumbnail? Yeah, show the thumbnail. Timing is everything. Yeah. Pick a lane, Giants. You got the fast lane, which is the contenders. You got the. Rebuilders, the Sox and Rockies, and then I mean we could have put a bunch of other teams, but it'd have been too crowded. The Giants choose either, either spend money to try and contend, or tear it down and rebuild. You can go ahead and remove that. I yeah, I, I know uh, that, that picture wasn't taken in L.A. or San Francisco because there was no yeah, traffic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I I did a little video today, Ned, and this I, I want to know if. If this is a uh, just a wild, crazy thought, or is this something that it seems like it's something the Dodgers know how to do? I was making a move for the Giants. Say, if the Giants really want to, this is a about contending, not trying to, you know, if you want to contend for twenty five. My plan was go sign Snell, go sign Burns, go sign Flaherty. And then you only have one guy there with a qualifying offer, and that's Burns. Then trade Webb because you've added and you get rid of that salary and you bring in a really good young player for Webb and you get rid of some of your other stuff that you can, that's not, that's movable, that's contract wise. And you stay below the CBT, which is what the Giants want to do. But now you have a pitching staff of Burns. Snell, Clarity, Robbie Ray, and Kyle Harrison, or somebody else, and you still have the money to go sign a Hassan Kim, and you got a young player that's ready to play uh, for Webb, and now you've got a nucleus of a young team with strong pitching, and that's the only way you're going to ever compete, I think, against a team like the Dodgers. You can't beat them at the plate. You're going to have to beat him pitching. Is that a feasible plan that a team that would, I mean, that's what I would do. I Maybe I'm way off. Maybe that's nuts. But the Giants could do that if they were willing to spend the money. Well, Danny, you have a lot of moving parts there. A lot. Yeah, this, this isn't one of those big stores you can just walk in and go down aisle five and get Burns and go down aisle six and pick up a Snell and go down aisle seven and just keep going. It takes so much, so many people to say yes. Just go through that. 
Right. You know, go go through the number of people you just mentioned. Okay. And how many people have to say yes? You're probably uh, talking about 25 to 30 people have to say yes. And one of the key parts to what you just said is that you're going to get these starting pitchers, trade Webb, and get really good player a player or two back that are going to be really excellent for you. Prospects. Who's, who's doing that? What team? What is? Who's the other team? You yeah. know. Well, so you know, it's it's a it's a great fantasy league thought. Yeah, I mean, it's just something I think if you were aggressive. I mean, the Dodgers seem to be aggressive enough. I know the Dodgers have a plan A and a plan B, as most teams probably do. But the Dodgers yeah. seem to like, okay, we're going to execute this quickly. They don't waste time. Last year they moved and got their guys. You know. Farhan with the Giants last, you know, wait, 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 wait until the market drops to where he thought he could get the deal, then moves. But if you really want to pounce and be competitive like the Dodgers, you know, I, I liken the Dodgers to a team that just says, you know what, we want to win and we're going to do whatever it takes. And we're not going to worry about the luxury tax because we're still making money. And you know what? Eventually we'll walk away with several titles. And when the day ends and when we want to sell this team or whatever and move and we'll take our profits then, whatever. But 